Welcome to the Rubonus Podcast. I'm the host, Anato Surbonas, and this time I'm joined by Augusta Šulauskas and Gitis Blaževičius. Gitis Višnauskas. <laughs> and it, this is a funny coincidence, because the last time we had you on the podcast, it was also a Q&A podcast, and we were in Belgrade. And today, straight after the podcast, I'm going to Belgrade again. Okay. So. You want the Serbian minister, uh, nickname in Basket News. No, 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 Mindugas uh, Bertis is, is Yeah, our, that's locked for, yes. for the rest of the... This position is locked. Of his life, for sure. Yeah, so that's a funny, very interesting coincidence. You're going to Belgrade to just see Žalgiris, right? No, nothing, nothing, no work. I would say to v- see... Workation. Stark arena okay. atmosphere and to experience the whole stuff, not to see Žalgiris. <laughs> I don't think so. In my priority list of that trip, although it's kind of an expected trip, but <laughs> we'll explain it later. Uh, this is a Q&A session uh, today, which means that only BN Plus subscribers will get the full or bonus podcast. And if you're not subscribing us yet on BN Plus, join us on basketnews.com slash plus. Uh, we have three different subscri- subscription levels and y- for becoming BN Plus member, you get a lot of interesting features, including Q&A podcasts, uh, be an insider platform with a lot of rumors and behind the scenes stuff, Augusta's breakdowns, our interviews, exclusive interviews that we post on basketnews.com, uh, and also our amazing WhatsApp and now Discord uh, community, uh, closed basketball fans community, I would say from all over the world. We have over 700 BN Plus members at the moment and we give a special shout out to our GM subscribers, Nikola Belic, Dave Gassman, Yonut Gergescu that we actually met last week in Konas and Kimon. And we also have a solid group of all-star members with Gabriel Serva, Nico Zinio, t T21, Stefan Stamenic, Koki, Nikola, R, Baltvarne, Costas B, Victory, EuroLeague Fantasy Talks, Igor, and Nick BG. Keeps on growing. I love it. Yeah, and uh, there's one thing I actually wanted to address before going with the questions. It's Dan Milojevic. Mm. And uh, I remember we were discussing Dan Milojevic case uh, before the podcast and there was this thing uh, when I asked about some memories and what comes to your mind when you think about Dan Milojevic uh, it's simple as that our guys they're not fully aware uh, about Dan Milojevic legacy because I mean he's a legendary Serbian player but he didn't play much outside of Serbia he played for uh, Valencia he also played for uh, Budišnost but still he's I would call him more like a local ledger. And what I think would be nice for, since Urbonus is the podcast that unites European basketball basketball community, I thought of sharing the knowledge and sharing the legacy of Dan Milojevic. And I kindly ask our Serbian followers or Balkan followers to uh, share your memories, uh, share your perspective of Dan Milojevic legacy in comment section. You know, okay, for okay. Lithuanians, for German uh, or bonus yeah, yeah. followers, Greeks, for everybody around the world to understand uh, the legacy of Dan Milojevic, uh, to remember him well uh, once again, as all these teams, organizations did already, like 23,000 people coming over to Stark Arena to honor Milojevic. We saw a special event for Dan Milojevic before Golden State Warriors game. Mm-hmm. Uh, Warriors coaching staff took uh, a round of uh, took round of shots of Rakia before the game uh, to honor uh, Milojevic. Mega will call their f- f- practice facilities, training facilities after Dan Milojevic name, and I've heard that ABBA League's MVP award will be also co- uh, called after Dan Milojevic. So a lot of nice things. Uh, to remember, and this what we asked, uh, what we what we ask for our our bonus followers. I was afraid for a second you were gonna put me and Augustus on the spot and uh, make us share our memories of Dan, which we probably don't have many, as you mentioned in the beginning. But no, that's a great idea, yeah, he a was great a, message to send. What I remember that he was a rebounding beast. I read some stories that he, by Americans, he was called like Serbian Barkley. Mm-hmm. He was super close to Nikola Jokic, and you know him passing away. It was a big hit to not just entire Balkan or NBA community that were close to Dan, but a lot of a lot of people. So 
you know that's that's a huge loss because we're talking about the potential future Serbian national team head yeah, coach. He that's was what I read. he was like uh, called as the next head coach of Serbian national team when Svetislav Pešić uh, will finish his stint his era. So you know, yeah. so much yeah. basically on social media. Just uh, looking in the last in the last week, uh, so many uh, names responding. You know to to this tragic event. Uh, superstars like Steph Curry, maybe. I don't think a lot of people really recognized how much he meant to, to this Warriors organization, to the players, obviously. I think it's obvious he had a close relationship with a lot of these guys. And it was it was really nice to see a lot of them speak up their minds publicly. That was a really nice thing to do. Yeah, so we lost the legendary player, bright <clears throat> basketball mind and very bright personality. But let's let's go with the questions that we got. And I would like to start with Ghost Killer. 619 and <laughs> this is That's a very question. Yeah, 619. <laughs> Why it is is a pal hater and how can we change that? I think we can't change it, right? That's just I something think he's not too a deep hater. inside. Yeah. I think we're on it already. <clears throat> we find Ritis we suspended him indefinitely. <laughs> he's not on the podcast anymore until he shows more love to Pan mm. Michaels. I yeah. think that that's our way. That's how we were taught, you know, through force, through punishments, <laughs> and just being just being harder than him. So we'll try to change him. What do you think? Were you born uh, in independent Lithuania already? Or? Uh, I was no, nah, yeah, I was born in independent Lithuania, okay. but I was, you know, I was thinking where these methods are coming <laughs> from, you know, but, but. from my parents. <laughs> they 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 went through the system. We, ha- we okay. still have this crazy legacy of of Soviet Union. I have I have a theory on Ritas that you know, looking at the guy, he obviously enjoys the tasty side of food. I mean, this is a diss because he's not here. I can say that, and I like to always critique him in his face. So, no worries about that. But you know, what uh, does the healthy food look like? It's usually green. He doesn't like that. So. <laughs> That's my theory. Okay. Wow. Makes makes a lot of sense. It doesn't. Actually. <laughs> uh, we have a. Are, you, are we gonna actually answer this uh, like honestly and seriously or not? I think Ritis has answered this. He's, yeah, he's that's not true. A power if you want his answer, just direct. Uh, just reach him out through Instagram direct messages. Send him some yeah. good. Dishes. Or Facebook. He's he's responsive there. Yeah. You know, in the comment section. Uh, I think. Adam Subert is our is new BN Plus member, right? And yes, he I was so. pretty active, and he had did Not I like pronounce his questions. name well? Uh, I, I hope Seward. so. Subert, yeah. And he had many interesting questions, but this one is simple for a warm up for Gitas as well. Gitas, so which players highlights are constantly in your YouTube rotation? Yeah, so I I will. Start this, not debut, because I did a few podcasts already, but I'm going to be honest and I'm going to confess right away that I am a bandwagoner, uh, as as bandwagon as it gets, to be honest. And I don't really have someone constantly there. And I'll ask you this question as well, guys. But for me, at the moment, it's nothing original. It's just the alien, Victor Rambanyama. Something outlandish to watch, uh, let's say, most mornings, usually, to, to see something crazy that he does, that's uh, Vembanyama. But then, if you asked me two years ago, I would have told you, told you Luca probably. Because Luca already uh, was balling, I mean, he was balling from right away, but it was like those highlights where he hit those uh, buzzer beaters from the corner, like those kind of things. Yeah, and I always change whoever, like whoever gives me the endorphins, the dopamine, I go for that player. Uh, But then if you ask me three years ago, it's a really random NBA player. Uh, Could you guess who that was? 2021. Uh, Played for the Brooklyn Nets. Kyrie? No. It has to be a random player. I mean, it's quite like, because it's not really an NBA player. But played in for the Mike Brooklyn Nets. Yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah. I used to not even just watch highlights in the morning. I would stay up at night or or wake up at wow. night to watch him specifically play for Brooklyn Nets because he was like for me one of one of us, one of our guys. Even though he's American, obviously yeah. played in the NBA before, but because he was so prolific in the Euroleague, it was like, okay, how is he gonna look against the Americans? So and he looked good. I yeah, mean, yeah, he, he had looked a good. Stint in Brooklyn in the regular season, mm-hmm. so. 
Yeah, I was hyped. I so. remember also like uh, getting uh, up early and then watching. One of the first things I would do was like, watch what Mike James did in the in the NBA. And game. he was actually delivering highlights every and, night. And, basically. And, oh, you yeah. know that uh, film session thing you did and and that highlight I watched live. So mm. for me, I literally I think jumped up and grabbed my head after that because obviously he was involved, but also the highlight was probably the best I've ever seen live. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What uh, do you watch, Zanatis? Uh, I know this is a question whatever for me, this I way. found on my Twitter feed. Mm. So this morning I watched Tim McMahon and mm. uh, Luka Doncic yeah, in yeah. the press conference. That was interesting. Uh, <laughs> he watches press conferences highlights. <laughs> yeah, I mean he's a journalist. Come on. <laughs> Adam Seward had another question: Which fringe NBA talents game do you think has the most upside in becoming a star in the Euroleague? I think Augustus should start answering this question first. Well, right? Why me though? Because you're the expert right here on this wow. table. You're the analyst. <laughs> And you watch press conferences. And yeah. Yeah. Um, I think uh, two names here uh, that I have. It's Ty Ty Washington. He is now on a two-way deal with Milwaukee. He's a 2022 first-round pick uh, by the Thunder, 29th pick. He played in Houston last year. Uh, didn't play much. I think around 15 minutes per game. Traded this summer to Milwaukee. This season, he has only two games. He spent most of his time in the G League. Um, guard. 1 meter 91 centimeters only 22 years old so he's you know i don't think he's coming to the europe quickly because he wants to stay in the nba but he is a crazy scorer like that guy can do just everything uh so what's not letting him play in the nba instead of coming why is he a fringe nba player then quickly like if you could i don't know man it's like it's about fit environment that you are in uh you need he's a he's a player that needs ball in his hands and uh and when then, you have dame yeah. when you have chris middleton when you have yanis on your team you're going to be a spot-up shooter at the most and uh, you know he needs the ball in his hands and he needs to get better as a player too for, for the for the nba level but i think he's really promising and i would love to see him uh in europe who you got uh, I looked at this question from a different perspective, uh, and the first thing that uh, came to my mind were European options uh, for the EuroLeague and for the upcoming offseason, actually. And uh, I had a kind of quiz question for you guys. What is the most demanding or high demand position right now in the EuroLeague besides point guard position? Power forward. Exactly. And there's one interesting stretch four option in the NBA which might actually leave the NBA. He got a good contract recently. Yeah, Davis Bertens. And if, uh, yeah, it's Davis Bertens. <laughs> <laughs> I had another question, you know, so. He's sitting on the bench on the OKC. It was like power forward, best shooter. He's sitting on the bench. It, it was easy. Uh, his yeah. contract is for another two years or something? No, like it's basically expiring. I think it's okay. a, he's on an expiring contract. And oh, he's okay. not playing. Mm. So and, and he heard, made enough though now to just live wherever in Europe exactly like a pimp he, probably he signed eighty million contract his last contract yeah, was yeah, eighty million yeah. contract and I heard that he's being targeted by Euroleague teams already mm. and I also went through the list of players that at least I heard in the last year in the last few months those names who were linked to some Euroleague teams and my list would include Frank Nil Nilakina. Sandro Mukelashvili, Furkan Korkmaz, uh, Danilo Golinari, uh, Svi Mikhailuk, uh, Patty Mills, but it might be not the European option, it might be Australia. Ishmael Wainwright is not the European player, but he nice was option like there. borderline yearly guy. Nice option there. And I think who's also worth to, to follow, uh, the case worth to follow is Usman Garuba, Boan, uh, Boban Marjanovic, and Alexei Pokushevsky. I can't believe you just not answered the question. Which one player's game would have the most upside was the question. I mean, and a lot and of these guys don't have the upside, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's just the not things, don't worry. You will, <laughs> you will, you will, every, every you will, get, player, you will so, get used to it, don't yeah. worry. Don't I'm worry just bringing it. different perspectives. I'm giving some it. insight, guys. I just mentioned seven NBA guys who might actually end up playing in EuroLeague, and now you just care about and which one does the have question? the most upside? Come on. Come on. Oh Upside, my God, uh, Mr. Politician over here. I would say Mamukelashvili. Okay, that's probably, a fair answer. Probably Mamukelashvili. It's young, yeah. I I actually, now I think I fucked up with this question because I didn't think about the upside, but I thought about the what I would like to see. 
It's a guy who was nicknamed the next Allen Iverson back in the day, but then he never delivered. Uh, now he's 31 years old <clears throat> and is injured at the moment uh, because he's a free agent who played for a Mexican team. I'm doing like a quiz thing right now and we'll see who's going to get it. Um, okay, you won't get it, but basically Trey Burke is the guy ah, I was okay. talking about. Okay. He is, in my opinion, something that Michigan represents that Mike James was before he came to Europe, as in had offensive talent, was undersized and uh, just wasn't in the wrong situations. And I would say I would see him, <coughs> even though he's small, doing the same kind of things, just scoring. I mean, he could be at the floor level, Carson Edwards, at least, in my opinion. And yeah, then, but he's 31 already. 31, right? yeah, and just injured. But so but he, he doesn't have a big history of injuries or anything, and mm. he's just sitting on the bench. And he like scored multiple 30-plus points performances in the NBA. Mm. So he has that offensive talent. And yeah, I, I would compare him not with Mike James then, because he actually came to Europe very young. He didn't have any like that's, NBA experience. Yeah, that's true. That's but true. I would compare him to Shabazz Napier, probably. Mm. <laughs> Okay, that's, that's a better fair comparison. That's a better comparison. I don't remember the last time I saw him, but I remember watching him in the NCAA uh, tournaments, and he was like, oh, okay. I, I was thinking when he was young, he's going to be like the next guy in the NBA, but then the NBA just went away from the small guards, and yeah, that was it. Uh, BN Plus member Stefan Staminich has a question about Dubai. If you guys, that's the most popular question that we get on BN Dubai Plus. Dubai uh, is like, you said before but the this podcast, one, it's always about Dubai. But this one Dubai. was really creative, I would say. So all good, Stefan. Mm -hmm. If you guys were named as the head coach of Dubai and you are creating a team from scratch to compete in the EuroLeague and your owner says that he has enough money so you can choose any player in the world and be included for a free year contract and to build a EuroLeague squad around him, who would it be? Can I start? And I will cheat right away because okay. Luka, Luka Doncic. No, no, no. <laughs> because I'm also about to. I'm cheat. not going to answer the question the way that uh, was it Jonot who asked this question or uh, Stefan Simonich, right? Yeah. Stefan. I'm not going to answer your question straight uh, like you intended it to be, uh, Stefan, because I I don't think sporting results. Uh, so let's say if a coach is hired, I don't think for him it really would matter what players he would have because. The sporting results with uh, uh, enough money will be fine. Like they'll they'll figure it out. It's not about that. I think for me, the problem with Dubai team would be how to attract fans and interest about the team because it's in the Middle East. Europeans will not care about it whatsoever. So who's gonna care for uh, for for that team? Is it the Middle East? Like is it Dubai people who are gonna care about it? Perhaps, but I think they love football more. So I think for that reason. I would put myself first, not as a head coach, but as a team owner and a GM, and try to get all the biggest washed up NBA names into one team, and then even hire an NBA coach, and then have this, you know, we always have this discussion or like this topic on our channel, NBA versus the EuroLeague, have this in real life, basically make a almost like an old NBA guy's team in the EuroLeague that... Now, the NBA fans and the American fans will be interested in how they're going to do in EuroLeague. And also Europeans are going to have something to hate. Y you could create Europe versus NBA videos every week, basically. That yeah. would be a dream of Agnes, right? For, for, for two weeks, you could do that. Okay. And then, but yeah, anyway, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's Gita, my idea. So, Gitis, your idea is to bring... Uh, so, wash like... Up, wash up, just... just Cousins, John Wall, yeah. Dwight Howard, you Let's name say it. NBA superstars from the past that mm -hmm. are near the end of their careers and an NBA coach. Yeah, yeah. So basically what Panathinaikos have been doing for the last five <laughs> years before this season. Wow. Just kidding, guys. But I know the question <laughs> wow. for the I, next Q&A. I really Q &A. thought that was the biggest Panathinaikos wow. hater. So. Okay. Hey, okay. hey, just go watch the latest or bonus clip about Panathinaikos, why they will make... Probably Nobody's going to watch this part right now. Everybody just quotes you on, <clears throat> on Greek uh, yeah, media okay. outlets. Love, but, well, love what Panathinaikos have been doing for this season. Guys, this was just a short segment of the full Q&A podcast that went over an hour where we talked about athletes from other sports who could be great basketball players. Also, we ranked the top EuroLeague guards. We chose between the two derbies, the Belgrade and the Greek derby, which one would be perfect for Final Four semifinals, and also picked our all-time Spanish EuroLeague team's starting fives. So make sure to subscribe to basketnews.com slash plus, become a BM Plus member, and I'll see you there.